Right. It's happening very soon. Okay. Now, I'm sure many of our viewers have watched our preview uh, of this uh, mission and uh, seen those animated uh, uh, shots of the uh, astronauts going in. And now you're about to see, there they go, the real thing is happening. Wow, <laughs> isn't that exciting? Like in steamy. That's wonderful, we can give them away from our studio too. Wish they could see us. So that is uh, the first astronaut is there and... Uh, oh. And the door is closing. <laughs> yeah, the door is closing. So he has to fix the door. So uh, that to uh, but this time, you know, that's uh, Mr. Jing Haipeng is yes. the first one to enter in Tiangong 1. Yes. And this time, it seems that he's much more experienced than before. And this time, his action is more stable than the first time. Ah, right. <laughs> it looks very stable to me. <laughs> Uh, everything is going according to plan. That's uh, wonderful. But the important thing you have to notice is that once the two astronauts are in this capsule, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, this uh, vehicle is flying backward. The Tiangong uh -huh. 2 is readying itself by opening the door backward, uh -huh. uh, ready for Shenzhou 11. Yeah. So it's currently still flying backward. And the next move is to have a 180 degree turn uh -huh. to, to make sure that the, uh, the Shenzhou fly ahead of Tiangong 2. Oh, I see. Okay. So this is another uh, a crucial part of the mission. Can you just uh, give us an idea of what's being said there? To, uh we heard some instructions coming. Uh, because there are also many uh, devices and instruments to uh, echo the status of Tiangong 2. So they need to adjust these kind of uh, instruments and uh, press some, maybe press some buttons to adjust the status uh -huh. of Tiangong 2 and also the whole uh, combination. Because before the flight, uh, both astronauts are well trained for management of the combination. It is very complex because you need to handle two spacecrafts yes. and uh, how to control the attitude, how to manage the, the electricity uh, supply is a, is a very com uh, complicated issue. And the voltage between the two vehicles are different because uh, you know, our Tiangong 1 and the Tiangong 2 use the uh, electric supply system with a voltage of about 100 volt, right. while the Shenzhou spaceship with a power supply of 28 volt. So we need a conversion. So you can see from the right side of the picture, the astronauts are busy making connections uh -huh. between Tiangong and Shenzhou on a number of uh, uh, connections uh, could be electronically, yes. could be air conditions, could be uh, uh, water supplies and others. So there are many connections that needs to be made uh, before these two modules can fly as one. Uh -huh. So the other astronauts probably in the, in the in the Tiangong 2 is switching on a number of uh, onboard equipment. I'm sure yes. he's behind the camera. And this one is busy at the hatch uh, between the connections and making, uh, uh, making the necessary connections between the two. Yes, well, this is um, a, a point where uh, we could say that housekeeping duties are taking place now before uh, the next stage of the mission begins. Uh, I'm curious to know, what would the temperature be uh, now? It, it obviously has to be the same, moving from one craft to the other. Um, would we be looking at something like uh, 22 degrees uh, Celsius? Uh, the, something like that? The, there is a specification of the temperature. The mm. temperature is set to 21 degrees oh, uh, 21. centigrade, mm -hmm. and uh, it can be deviated to uh, between 20 to 25. Mm -hmm. And the humidity is 30 to 40 percent and can be adjusted. Right. And uh, the noise uh, condition is less than 120 dB. Oh, okay. So uh, these are the conditions on board. Board, uh, and uh, the equipment will make necessary adjustment uh, for these temperatures. All right, well, we're going to uh, move from our studio to Wu Guqiu, who is uh, our reporter uh, at the Beijing Aerospace Command uh, Control Center. Uh, Guoxu, uh, there must be a lot of excitement there because we heard all the applause. What's uh, been the reaction to today's mission? 
Well, I, uh, it was a very amazing moment when we finally saw the two astronauts floated into the space lab and we, uh, all people here uh, cannot help just uh, applauding, applauding to that. And now we have uh, a guest, Mr. Tui Xiaofeng, who, who is from the Aerospace Control Center. He is going to join me to share uh, with me his uh, feelings of today's operation. And now, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Tui, what was your job during this operation just now, and what was your concern just now? Yes, well, as we can see, the two astronauts have boarded the Tiangong 2, and uh, which means this is a remarkable success in this mission. Um, as for my job at the Beijing Aerospace Control Center, I have been focused on the correctly running of our commanding and uh, control systems which responsible for the sending and uh, sending of the every piece of the tight control command to Shenzhou 11 and Tiangong 2 processing every byte of the telemetry data from the spacecrafts uh, calculating the most accurate orbits and uh, displaying and visualizing the status of every component on the spacecrafts. Mm -hmm. uh, during the docking process, a series of crucial events occurred in real time, and our systems needed to respond and act uh, precisely and uh, rapidly. I'm very glad that our system has accomplished all the tasks perfectly. We will leave our uh, coverage there from the ground centre and let's go back to our studio guests. And uh, we have with us Professor Yang Yuguang and uh, also Xu uh, Yansong, who's Director of the International Cooperation of the China National Space Administration. Uh, just to update us now, will you, because uh, as we heard from the Chief Engineer uh, speaking a short uh, time ago, this has become a remarkable success for China's space mission.